Hello, everyone. Kira is here. Thank you very much for uh, joining us again, like for another episode of the special Nono class that we are doing again, like from our headquarters in Kagawa, Japan. Uh, Kira, um, with me, my colleague, and she's making um, some kind of noodles today uh, on our noodle machine. So stay tuned for the later class. And um, so we're talking about how to perfectly make our uh, noodle dough, you know, which is like foundation, right? Foundation for the great noodles. So um, that's what we're gonna talk about and that's it's gonna be really important. So please uh, stay tuned till the end of the class. All right, so let's get started. But like, um, as always, like allow me to spend a few minutes talking about us first, like just what we do and, um, you know, uh, as a company, and, uh, and so like we're um, Yamato manufacturing company, like we're in this business of uh, noodles for 45 years. Um, so we've been manufacturing and supporting noodle machines. And um, not only that, right? Uh, we've been running noodle school uh, for the past 20 years. Um, we have a school here in Kagawa, um, which actually it's happening right now like we are we, we like actually conducting ramen school right now so that's why we are in this room um you know uh broadcasting this class um so we do school right so we teach everything right from you know how to make noodles to like you know how to produce well soups um from scratch right and the toppings um even like we teach like how to develop many items uh, from scratch. So um, we, we get a lot of students who want to open up their own restaurants and stuff. So that's what we do. Um, then we have another school in Tokyo and uh, Singapore. And so we have um, customers using our noodle machines over 60 countries. And we have like eight out offices in Japan, by the big city. And we have um, offices in South Korea and Singapore. In New York, United States, we also have uh, partners um, in different countries. So we are basically a group of um, noodle making experts, you know, who help our customers um, develop uh, their, you know, own noodles. Um, you know, provide recipe training, uh, whatever they need to start up their successful noodle businesses. So uh, we're talking about a, you know, this is a will be like great because like um how the basic so like you know literally like building foundation for great noodles and most deliciousness of noodles come from the noodle textures so to bring out great noodle textures like we need to perfect noodle doughs first and how we can make good noodles doughs uh good noodle doughs like varies from type to type hydration ratio type of noodles and ingredients so there are point certain points like we can cover and uh, so in this class, we'll try our best to cover as um, many of the important points on how we can build great noodle dough as we can in this class. So um, things where you're talking about, like perfect, perfecting noodle doughs, like strong foundation for great noodles, um, noodle textures we want our customers to experience, and uh, ingredients, right? Don't like ramen, udon, and soba and production methods and principles. And, um, and we are actually gonna show you guys, like demonstrate um, these um, methods and like principles, like you know, we talk about in the lecture, um, in demonstration, like by actually making those later, right? And so we're gonna finish this class um, by answering the question you may have during the class. So please feel free to send them in the comments. Thank you. And, Okay, so let's get started. So we'll talk about like different little textures, like focusing on the final textures we want our customers to experience. Um, Cause like ingredients in terms of like different noodle types, product, different noodle types, and as an extra, right? Uh, if you have um, time, I will cover uh, gluten-free noodles such as like 100% buckwheat soba noodles and others such as rice noodles briefly um because we already kind of covered this topic like partially in the previous class so if you're interested in making gluten free noodles uh, please check the recording of our previous class on our youtube channel so 
when making anything, right, you need to start with an end in mind. We need to picture it even before we, uh, you know, start to move, right, in case of like main noodles, um, especially good ones, we need to think about what kind of texture we want our customers to experience when they're biting the noodles. And we think this chart, right, helps us visualize and consider the considering the noodle texture. So what's sort of hardness, crunchiness, smoothness, chewiness, or bounciness we want them to feel. We can draw it from our past past experiences, you know, buying some of our favorite noodles or like create something new or crossing between our favorites. And what affects the noodle texture or ingredients, especially flour, hydration, hydration level, and noodle size. Okay, and um, so when looking at ingredients you want to use, you know, there are key ingredients, right? When making different types of noodles. So for ramen, you should focus on flour and kansi. So when making udon, um, our focus shifts to flour, um, salt, and vinegar. Kiss with soba noodles, we should think about buckwheat flour and binding agent if you use any. Other types of noodles, such as like rice noodles, we should focus on the quality of rice flour and binding agents, such as certain type of starch. Focusing on wheat flours, there are different types of, in terms of um, gluten content and quality, and uh, which are based on the type of wheat and granule size. Um, basically, the higher the protein content, the harder the noodle texture. For example, hard flours are used to for bread, right, pasta, like ramen and other types of Chinese noodles, and a softer flour with a protein content like about like seven to nine percent is used for um, udon noodles and other types of dough products like bao. All right, so let's uh, um, I'll just like briefly talk about like what's important about wheat flours first. So this is a wheat flour and wheat flour has um, protein, right, in the starch moisture. And what changes that, like, amount of protein in the starch? So, like, protein basically works at, like, creating, like, hardness and strength, right? When um, we add water to it, like, it becomes gluten and it forms, like, a web-like structure. And gluten is an essential component for, like, making wheat-based noodles. It forms, like, and um, so, uh, web-like structure inside gluten that's like uh, going to be like the base right foundation for like constructing form noodles and um, they trying to like sort of like kind of reinforcing bars inside concrete bar um, and then bind starch and water together so like three things needed to make wheat based noodle dough uh, it's wheat flour water and uh, mixing uh, motion and um, so that another thing like that, you know, we have to know is uh, like it's starch, right? Starch, like starch walking, like kind of like concrete, making it sticky and viscous. And so that, you know, like kind of digging deeper into like kind of protein, right? And the starch, right? Um, so the uh, the protein, the base, like, so we, we all like kind of like went over this like uh, previous uh, classes. But um, so I'm gonna make it like kind of brief, but like it's like inside inside the so like we when we add um, water to protein, right? Um, comes gluten, right? Kind of kind of uh, glutinous kind of texture, um, gluten. And but like when it's boiled, uh, it loses that texture and then it kind of sort of like turns like kind of dry. And um, like uh, the the gluten. Is uh, can be like divided into like kind of equally into two parts and then what was the gliadin and then um, another one is like gluten and basically gluten is the one that um, uh, is like water insoluble component of gluten and the gliadin is water soluble and the gliadin is the like what what causes actually celiac disease. And then glutenin is like responsible for the strength and then elasticity of dough. Okay, and um, the starch, right? Starch uh, is basically divided into two parts, uh, amylose and amylopectin. Usually 20, 20 to 80% uh, ratio. 
Um, so such is basically carbohydrates that's like linked by glucose and separated by how glucose is linked into amylose and amylopectin. And when it's small, like it becomes glutinous through deltanization. And this is start like starch is linked glucose and amylose is linked li linearly, but amylopectin is branched glucose. And so amylose is usually like 20 to 30 percent of starch, amylopectin 70 to 80 percent. So a bigger ratio of amylose makes uh, a bigger ratio of amylose makes texture dry and crumbly, but when there's more amylopectin. Um, the texture becomes chewier and more viscous. And this is not just wheat flour, but like, you know, for those we are quite into rice, right? You can say the same thing. So like rice with a higher amylopectin ratio is chewier. So finding like wheat flour, like rice flour with a higher ratio of amylopectin leads to chewier texture, which um, most of us like. To find the flour with a higher amylopectin ratio, we may rely on this measuring device we call a Brabenta machine, which m measures the I mean, graph value of a particular flower. And this is what looks like, and uh, what it looks like. And then um, some like device, like we have like our, our headquarter, and uh, you know, so we can um, actually measure the flower, like you're kind of like thinking of using it, like for your noodles. Um, so you, you, you know, you can send it to us and uh, we can measure, you know, test it and measure it for you. All right, so um, that's enough. Uh, we flower on other types of flowers. Uh, basically, other factors we need to consider making, like the kind of little texture we want our customers to experience are the ingredients, which we kind of talked about. And um, we're gonna talk more about them, like later about like putty and viscosity and probably granule size of the flowers and hydration ratio. And uh, so basically uh, the, this percentage is calculated as the weight of liquid ingredients divided by the weight of solid ingredients. So, um, you know, if, so like if you're doing like um, 10 kilograms of solid ingredients, like in including flowers and that stuff, and then we are adding three kilograms of liquid, I mean liquid ingredients, then that's 30%. So that, that's like hydration ratio, like 30%. So that's how you calculate. And in terms of noodle dough, the hydration rate ranges from 25% to 60%, depending on what kind of noodle we're talking about. The less, the harder the texture. Um, noodle size also plays a role in um, creating noodle texture. Um, the thinner, the softer, or the weaker, <coughs> or the less bite. Um, this is another way to think about these factors, like, you know, we, we sort of like, a, Went over like in the previous class so if you're interested in knowing more about this kind of um you know different different factors that affect the neural texture um please uh check out previous classes on our youtube channel and so like just configure like each of these factors to make a dough that ends up having the ideal texture that we want right okay so basically when it comes to building good um foundation of or like a base of like great noodles, um, good thin noodles though. Um, you know, uh, we need to think about the uh, what ingredients, right? <coughs> right, ingredients. So uh, this is the, like our ingredients, like in the, like for ramen noodles, ramen noodles, right? There's all the ingredients like we kind of talked about. Well, wheat flour, you know, we need to like think about like protein, ash, and viscosity. And there may be like some other like solid solid ingredients like eggs and um, you know other types of flowers, but um, like liquid ingredients, right? Um, we need to focus on uh, kansi, and uh, there are many types of kansi, but uh, the types of kansi like we are talking about today are just a combination of, of um, potassium carbonate, sodium carbonate, um, potassium carbonate. So basically. Um, what it does, like hardens the noodle texture and it changes the noodle color, you know, comes like turning the uh, white uh, flower into like kind of yellow color. And it has this kind of smell, like um, um, many people would find like probably unpleasant. Um, the sodium company does exactly the opposite to make it soft, um, kind of moisture. And so basically um, we, we uh, change the like ratio of like blend, blending ratio, blood potassium carbonate, sodium carbonate. 
So when we are making um, thin noodles, we increase the amount of potassium carbonate to make it um, harder. And when we are making like thicker noodles, uh, bigger noodles, um, we want to make it softer to compensate for the, the thickness of the noodles. So we increase the amount of sodium carbonate. So that's so sort of like we you know change the blending ratio of like can see um, when uh, you know considering the kind of texture that you know we want our customers to experience. So udon noodles, uh, udon noodles. So like solid ingredients again, like you know, wheat flour, right? You need to think about like protein, ash, viscosity. But uh, liquid ingredients, like we need to focus on. Uh, for in terms of udon, like we have to focus on like salt and vinegar, right? Um, so the uh, so we use a lot of salt in udon noodles, and how much we use is that like we make twelve percent to like fifteen percent salty level of salt water, and then add it to the flour in mixing, right, to make dough. That this this is like way way beyond being salty, but like you know, there's a few reasons we use. It's like salty udon noodles. So first it makes uh, like dough more elastic by like tightening the gluten in wheat flour. It also reduces the activity of like uh, enzyme, which break the protein or uh, wheat into like a shorter fragments, which like basically make dough texture loose and soft. When the temperature is high, um, this enzyme acts more, right? So like we need to add like more salt, keep the this uh, acidity down. Um, it also like helps keep off the growth of like bacteria, so it like improves, and it also like uh, improves the flavors of noodles. And um, there are other benefits, like you can see on this slide. And this is kind of what I just talked about. So like, salty level like uh, will increases like you know when they, well, we we should uh, add more salt like when it like temperature like increases right because of the enzyme activity. We need to uh, keep it down right. And uh, hydration ratio, like, you know, we need to add less water um, when it's hot, like when the temperature rises, right? Um, vinegar, right? Vinegar, we need, we may add like a little bit of vinegar, which helps optimize resting process, which um, I want to talk about later. Um, it, it keeps dough from uh, spoiling and control like pH level of cooking. So when we cook uh, udon noodles, right, um, most of the salt and vinegar needed are like dissolved into cooking water, making the cooking water light acid. And from our research, what we did like on cooking noodles, um, using cooking water that's neutral acid like alkaline, we found that the yield of cooked noodles is best, like the, yeah, the best when cooking noodles in water, that's light acid or light alkaline pH of like six and 10 respectively. Um, so we add a little bit of vinegar to get this effect. It's about like 1% of the weight of flour. So we may add a little bit. And then like we can say the same thing about like uh, kansi, right? Kansi, adding kansi to ramen noodles, like, and then kansi dissolving the cooking water. So like making the cooking water um, light alkaline. And so it has the same effect with this uh, kind of control like pH level the cooking water. Okay, so soba, soba noodles, right? So um, um, in Japanese, like means like buckwheat, which is actually a grain-like kind of triangle shape, see like, and then not really ready to like wheat, despite the name. And because um, buckwheat itself does not have any gluten, um, it's difficult to form it into noodle shapes. Uh, normally, we add uh, wheat flour, like other ingredients, to buckwheat to make uh, soba noodles, and because we look for um, good aroma of buckwheat, right? And then uh, basically, the aroma of, like a smell, like oxidizes over time. Um, so we usually freeze the buckwheat flour, like after milled, and then um, keep the aroma from evaporating. So, and then uh, other things that like there are other different ways. Buckwheat flour, depending on what part of buckwheat is used and how it's milled, right? And then the quality of buckwheat. Um, so, so, in terms of soba noodles, like we need to uh, focus on this buckwheat quality, right? Buckwheat quality. And so, the, what the buckwheat seed 
looks like. And so some soba noodles are usually made with a mix of buckwheat flour and wheat flour, which are usually high in protein content, right? And they are mixed at different ratios depending on the type of uh, soba noodles we want to make. Now, normally because um, buckwheat consists of like consists more cost more, right? Cost more, right? I mean buckwheat flour is really pretty expensive actually. Um, yeah, it's so like compared to like other types of flours that you know we used to make um, ramen noodles, like noodles. noodles um, some of them actually will cost like ten times more. Yeah, um, that that expense. Like if you're you know looking at like some some famous brands of uh, buckwheat flour. Um, so that like basically um, the higher the ratio of buckwheat mix, like the more expensive the soba noodles, right? So 100% buckwheat, juari soba, and it had like 82. 8 to 2 um, ratio, um, but we, we are considered like high quality and some of the high end super shops. And our super machines can make um, up to like 100% buckwheat soba noodles, and then our ramen machines can produce up to like 60% buckwheat soba noodles from scratch, um, depending on well, you know, quality of buckwheat flour. And you know, in terms of noodle texture, of course, like the buckwheat itself, like had you know, we do not like um, provide um, kind of like chewy texture that you know we, we can get like from uh, wheat flour. So um, when you are looking at like well, getting getting some like well good uh, noodle texture, then you know you should uh, think about adding wheat flour like some other uh, binding agent. Um, so there's a difference like between like um, the buckwheat quality like uh, well affected by like kind of milling methods. So buckwheat uh, seeds are like hauled and milled mainly using two methods, rolling, uh, roll milling, store milling, um, then roll milling like basically so you know it, milling machines uh, produce like buckwheat that mills the mill the buckwheat seed like faster but like because it generates heat. Um, you know, the aroma uh, is like uh, basically gone right uh, through the process. So uh, the quality is not good, even though like we produced a lot of them uh, in a short period of time. But like stone meal, it's, it's it's basically slow, right? Produces uh, less, but like because it's slow, doesn't generate as much heat. So the quality is basically better. And so binding agents, uh, ingredients, right? Uh, there are many of them, but because um, the buckwheat doesn't want to them, right? We we uh, want to use like some like binder uh, ingredients, and these are the types that we may consider using. And um, well, some of them like you know bring like certain good uh, noodle texture, and like some some of them like bring up like very good uh, flavor to the some of the noodles. Okay. Um, so, so we thought about, right, like final noodle texture, you know, we want our customers to experience, right? And then, um, you know, type from the noodle type, uh, we, we thought about like ingredients where we talked about them, right? Um, and then if, and then hydration, right? Hydration, like how much water we need to add, how much liquid we need to add. And then we should talking about, um, this is a gluten well based, uh, noodles and if you're talking about gluten-free noodles, right? And um, for those who like watch the uh, gluten-free noodle class uh, we did before, um, you know the the uh, sorry gelatinization um, was a key, right? So like you know we we need we also need like a think about temperature, right? And then hydration ratio, like and then depending on hydration ratio, um, the mixing time is different, and then um, and then we do this process called like first resting and then um, resting time and temperature are the key. And then we do the uh, pressing, you know, and then basically developing a gluten, right? And uh, we went going to like second um, phase of re resting process. And then again, like time and temperatures are the key. And then that's how we make uh, noodle dough, right? That's how we make noodle dough, right? So basically, um, when it when it comes to like building good foundation, like um, base of like good noodles, you know, good noodle dough, 
Um, it's very similar to building our own physical muscles. So to develop muscle, right, we, we need workout by stretching and applying pressures on the muscles. And if, you know, you guys like seen like, you know, many scientific studies like suggest that like, you know, we need to take a rest, right, after exercises in order for our muscles to grow, right? So we need time for our muscles to recover and um, prevent like, you know, such things like muscle fatigue and, um, you know, regaining like glucogen, right? To develop like our muscles like efficiently and effectively. And we can say the same thing actually when, you know, it comes like making noodle dough. We need to let dough take time to rest. Um, we keep, you know, if we keep like walking them out, right? Without letting them take a rest, right? end up like breaking them, breaking the inner muscles, which are essentially the sources of uh, great uh, nerve textures, right? So this is one of the uh, main reasons that we do the uh, resting process, uh, which we're gonna be talking about um, in a minute. Um, so certain, certain kind of like neural texture calls for a certain level of um, hydration, um, like amount of liquid that we add to the flour, right? And the hydration level determines the the neural texture and how much you know workout right that don't needs to do to have the optimal texture um, but basically the less liquid we are adding to the flour right lower hydration um, the more we need to work the dough right to gain good muscles the more liquid the less pressure we need to apply to the dough to have the ideal body so for example we need to mix um, solid and liquid ingredients for long minutes to bring dough to ideal conditions. The mixing process when hydration is at a certain level. But for um, noodles that are high in hydration, the ideal condition can be reached within a short period of time. And using the muscle, building analogy, you know, we're working the muscle or dough breaks gluten structures inside dough. And under working it, you know, of course, like does not develop strong muscle, right? Um, so there's an optimal amount of mixing time needed for dough, the particular level of hydration to be developed to a perfect condition to move on to the next process. Okay. <clears throat> so that's why, um, you know, lower the hydration, the longer the mixing time and higher the hydration, uh, less uh, mixing time, uh, shorter the mixing time. All right. Um, so... So this is a production process for uh, ramen noodles. And, um, you know, we went through these uh, slides like many, many times, like in um, previous classes. So basically like, um, so we are doing like, you know, of course, like we had to weigh the ingredients, right? Correctly, uh, the proper uh, ratios. And, um, you know, if you, if you like screw it up, like like anything else, like wouldn't matter, right? The rest of the process wouldn't matter. So you need to be accurate um, then to, you know, to be like make uh, quality dough, um, the consistency, consistent quality, right? And then like um, for uh, the production process methods, like, you know, we, we so I talked about like, so the weighing, right, of the ingredients and mixing and the resting, the first one, and pressing, pressing like so by kind of developing um, gluten structure inside dough, right? Kind of working the muscles and resting, second resting. And then the dough uh, is done. So like, you know, we, we, we have the perfect uh, dough for our great noodles, right? Okay, so the mixing, right? Mixing process is very important, right? So what's happening in the mixing process is that like, you know, and what we want to be happening in the mixing process is agitation graduation, where uh, each flour grain comes together, right, to form uh, crumbles of dough, right, and then it gets mixed with liquid. So um, we're not kneading, but preparing uh, solid and liquid ingredients for turning into an ideal condition for the next process. So what we're trying to achieve in the mixing process is a good hydration of the solid ingredients or flour. Each flour particle gets like equal amount of liquid and form crumbles dough. So for this to happen, right, the missing speed is also crucial for flour to bounce around and mix with liquid, which is agitation and granulation. 
So after years of research and experiments, we found that ideal mixing speed is 60 to 75 rotations per minute. Um, so measuring this field, like hand mixing, like of like noodle making artisans, right? So like we observed, you know, how like all these like noodle making artisans, like who would be like making like noodles for, you know, 50 years by hand, you know, and then so how quickly their hands move around, like to edge the flowers, and for particles like glide like through the, the through the fingers, you know, it's about the same speed. So. Uh, mixers are designed to render the same speed and stating like so like movements of the noodle making artisans. Um, and so solid ingredients are well hydrated with the liquid ingredients and ready for the next process, but need to rest first, right? For the following reasons and other than like what we talked about in the muscle building analogy. So the mixing, right? And then this is sort of like agitation and granulation. Um, in laceration. So like just, you know, like each flower particle like kind of, like, kind of comes together, like, you know, then to so like form like crumbles um, as the liquid is added and then uh, kind of, uh, you know, the, these guys are sort of like mixed around. So that's what's happening in the mixing process. That's what we hope um, happening, to be happening, mixing process. All right, so, um, so the resting, um, process, right? Resting process is important, right? Um, so this is uh, what's happening. So like, you know, we, we, of course, like we need to like promote like hydration, right? Like what when in resting and um, we need to degas, right? Um, so like in the mixing process, like there are some, some like dough that have like some uh, air pockets and we need to um, get rid of them, right? By degassing and uh, resting process like helps do that. And um, be, because uh, we are promoting, so like, you know, because of the temperature too, um, because we are promoting the uh, uh, enzyme activity. So in the wheat flour, and so uh, we could have better, better taste flavors of the wheat by resting. Okay, and um, so through like years of research and uh, study, right, we found this uh, optimal uh, resting uh, temperature line. And so we usually do like, so this is for um, so like udon noodles, you know, that are like high in um, hydration ratio. And then we do that also for uh, ramen noodles, high hydration ramen noodles too. Um, but um, so we uh, you know, let the dose sit, right, rest for um, 28 degrees Celsius uh, for two hours, right? That's the first one, this is first resting. And then for the second resting, um, uh, you know, we do that like a lower temperature, kind of like cool temperature, like 18 degrees Celsius for overnight, like, you know, let's say like 24 hours. So this is the sort of like um, kind of optimal uh, resting line, the like temperature line that we found like through um, uh, a lot of like experiments, like trying errors. Um, so that's what we found. So it's um, it's good to um, good to remember this. And so the uh, this is an development, like kind of pressure, like kind of working our muscle. Like after we do the first resting, right? So like you know we need to like work it out, like work out work the uh, dough, and. Um, so the pressure, like, to be, you know, we need to further, like, develop, like, wooden structure by applying pressure, like, force on the dough. And when doing this on the noodle machine, uh, can be done, either done by, the like, combining process, like, pressing in the press machine that we have, like, what we're good with in our wooden machine or soba machine, and apply equal and appropriate amount of pressure onto the entire area of noise is a key, right? Um, so, so there's a combining process. Like, so this is a, like in case like, you know, we, we are making kind of like a lower hydration dough, right? That's, that's uh, well, it's like in the range of like, maybe like 25% and 40 up to like 45%. Uh, so we do 
So we like walk the dog, right? Walk the muscle um, by combining them. Like so, so we first like make a sheet of dough, right? Uh, that's still like rough and weak. Um, we separate it, right? Separate it into two sheets, right? Two separate sheets and like, combine them through the rollers. And that's how so like kind of walk the dough um, in terms of like, you know, when we, we are making like kind of like low hydration ratio noodles. Um, because it's like lower hydration ratio, like, you know, I, I kind of talked about it like um, maybe like 10 minutes ago or so, um, you know, the lower the hydration ratio, like less water, like liquid, less amount of liquid writing, we need to, you know, work it harder, right? We, we need to work it harder. That's why we use this sort of kind of force, right? Uh, kind of bigger rollers um, to sort of like kind of force the dough um, into, well, it's like, you know, work it, work it, right? Um, so we need a lot of like bigger pressure to work that this uh, kind of like, sort of like drier dough. And case of uh, udon dough, right? Udon dough, like that's like high in hydration ratio. Um, so we have this press machine that is press the dough, right? And that's that's actually soft, you know, a lot softer because like udon dough, like, you know, we're talking about like hydration ratio of like 50% or so. So which makes the dough like a lot softer than the ramen noodle dough. So we um, use this press machine. It's sort of like kind of simple um, press unit and that so sort of like press the dough like kind of you know, with a kind of flat um, panel and like flat like metal, like stainless steel, like um, board, right? And then like just presses it, right? Um, and then um, there are certain area of like dough that's not really uh, pressured um, as well like uh, in the center, right? Center part of the dough. So we fold it, right? Fold the size into the center and then like we press it. So we, we do this like in three to five times depending on the uh, you know, hydration ratio and then a kind of dough that like con kind of dough condition that we have. And, um, you know, we, <sighs> Um, actually, Kagawa Prefecture is the home of, uh, you know, Sanuki Udon, the type of noodle, like type of Udon noodle, that's probably the most famous type of Udon noodles like in the world, right? Uh, this small prefecture has like o over like 700 Udon shops, right? And, um, but like these are like really small, like, you know, mom and pop shops like that have like sort of like offer like some like, unique noodles, you know, unique um, soups. Um, and then um, some of them are actually still um, do it by hand, right? And when, or like these people, like how they will work their dough is that like they actually step on them, right? Step on the dough um, to work the dough. So it's a, uh, so this uh, process like in the press machine, um, so like mimic the, the process of like foot stepping on the dough. And so this is, um, you know, so in the good development, like kind of you know, walking the dough, right? Um, well, applies a lot, of, like, you know, it's gonna be like a lot of like internal stress, right, on the dough, right? And again, like, you know, we don't want to overwork it. And then, you know, and then we, we wanna rest it, like, I mean, for um, so like efficient, like effective, like muscle development. So uh, we wanna rest it again, right? So the second resting process. Um, so that's again like for, for udon noodles, like we are talking about udon noodles now. So like that's 18 degrees Celsius, uh, like overnight, like 24 hours. Um, in terms of like ramen noodles, um, you know we also do like um, second resting process, right? And then um, of course like you know you relax the internal st um, stress of gluten and it, has like degassing effect, right? And then it activates the enzyme that the wheat, so um, it uh, helps, right? Um, develop like kind of better um, wheat um, flavor to the dough noodles. Okay, um, so that's how we make, like in, the, in terms of like production process, but methods wise, that's how we make the 
perfect dough, right? For, I mean, with a gluten uh, based uh, dough, right? Gluten based dough. And um, so it's kind of news like um, next week, you know, next Thursday. Um, it happens to be April 1st, but like, um, so we are talking about what we're doing the uh, uh, fundamentals of udon noodles uh, next week. And, and um, with a focus on um, Sanuki udon, Sanuki udon, like, so that's, you know, Sanuki means um, Kagawa, right? It's pretty sure, like, that's what, like we are, we're headquartered. And um, it's going to be fun because you know, Sanuki udon has sort of a very unique culture um yeah and then i'm gonna talk about i'm gonna show you guys like um so like kind of weird you know sort of like unique culture of like sanuki udon um and then of course like you know how we how we can make them from scratch and then um what's what's like trending and then sanuki udon is actually like very popular right and then um they're like very uh popular uh sanuki udon specialty shops like you know they're doing very very good like in a big city like tokyo too so uh we we can talk about that as well um next class so please um sign up for the next class if you're interested in it um other <laughs> topics um so soba noodles right uh soba noodles um so the buckwheat flowers so buckwheat flowers uh usually and then buckwheat soba noodles again like um sorry uh Soba noodle, you know, we, we're going to do like uh, Soba 101, uh, the basic of Soba, uh, in the week after the uh, April 1st. So uh, we're going to talk more about um, Soba noodles in more details um, in two weeks. So I, I'm going to probably just talk about it like briefly, but like you no know, buckwheat, um, kind of going back to the, like kind of ingredients of the, uh, but like buckwheat flour. So, um, the buckwheat ha like as a well, you know, has this uh, like well, the flowers are sort of like kind of like mixed together, like with like you know starch, and uh, each was starch, each particle starch, like right, kind of like you know uh, put together right, with a protein, which can be actually uh, dissolved like by uh, like adding water to it. So um, and then. Um, when making like soba noodles, you know, like make like really smooth, like good um, soba noodle dough, um, we need to first, um, of course, like sift it, like sift, like sift the the flour well, um, make it like making like really fine powders, and then um, we when we add like water, you know, like protein, like um, breaks, and then uh, the the starch particle like kind of spread around, um, so that. This is a one like just first, very first process that we have to apply when making soba noodles, and kind of same as like you know agitation granulation, um, you know as we like so sort of like hydrate the flour with the water, and of course like well the quality and the dishes and soba noodles like largely depends on the aroma right on buckwheat. Um, so, but like uh, aroma mold is gradually like dispersed in the air and uh, to a concentration below the level like we can detect over time, right? Um, so we need to um, kind of like freeze them after we like, you know, mill the flowers, right? And then, uh, so as we do the hydration process, it's like how the like, so like buckwheat powder turns into like crumbles of dough, right? So this is how sort of um, we do the hydration process of the buckwheat flour, I mean the soba noodles. And then um, soba noodles is different like from other types of, because you know, it doesn't have the gluten, right? And so like we use this um, uh, mixer that that's like, cons um, that's a, like construction mixer, like mechanics of mixer, like actually different from the mixer that we use for uh, udon noodles and, and ramen noodles. Um, but it's uh, sort of like beyond this, um, beyond this uh, class. So like, we'll, we'll, I'm gonna talk more about it like like in the two weeks, in the summer class, right? Um, and um, yeah, so I was gonna talk about this 
uh, gluten-free noodles. But like uh, for those of you who are interested in making gluten-free noodles, uh, uh, please check our gluten-free uh, class we did previously on our YouTube channel. But um, for those of you like quite interested in these slides, um, please let me know. Like I can probably send more information on this. Uh, well, you know, gel gelatinization and uh, gluten -free, like how you can make gluten-free noodles. So that's, that's what I had for this lecture. And then uh, let's so let's uh, check how uh, all these like stuff like we talked about in a demonstration of this uh, noodle making. <clears throat> so today we are just uh, making it's a very basic uh, ramen noodles. And um, so we talked about ingredients, right? We talked about the ingredients and this is wheat flour wheat flour and like when we we have like wheat flour for ramen noodles you know the protein content is important right protein content um it's not as high as like for, um protein content flour that that's usually used for like bread flour um but like you know uh, typical like the one we used uh, that one that was in uh, has like protein content like maybe like 10.5 to like 12 percent um then ash content is like quite low, like you know, 0.4 percent, and uh, should have like viscosity of like um, 800, like 750 to like uh, 900 BU per pender unit. And we have uh, this is a solid, and these two, three are liquid, and salt, constantly, and water. Okay. And uh, so this machine is called uh, rich men, rich men machine. And men means, of course, like noodles and like rich, you know, rich noodles um, machine. And um, and it has this mixer, right? Mixer, uh, that's 10 kilograms mixer. And, um, but like the minimum batch um, this mixer can do is like four, four kilograms. Uh, of solid ingredients, right? So, uh, and on top of it, you're adding liquid. And uh, so that fancy and salt needs to be dissolved in the water, right? And so we are making this kind of like a solution, um, fancy and salt, like so like solution water, and then um, we're gonna add it to the flour mixing process. So the mixing speed, right, is um, 60 rotations per minute, this mixer. And we talked about like kind of optimal um, mixing speed, right? And so we'll, we'll kind of like do the uh, kind of air mixing, like which, you know, just the solid ingredients is mixed, right? And then we'll add the liquid and you, you can see that liquid is like kind of dripping drip through the holes right the small holes to the flour so sort of like kind of you know being added to the flour like a little by little um to render uh well it's like good hydration like we need to hide we want to hydrate the dough i mean the solid ingredients like a little by little um otherwise you know we're gonna end up like having like a dough that's like wet more wet in, in this area than the other Parts, you know, so it's uh, it's not good. So that's why we want to add uh, liquid, right, uh, bit by bit, uh, to uh, facilitate some like you know good uh, hydration. And I, I love to watch, right? Um, I love to watch the mixing, right? I can probably watch, um, keep watching like for um, maybe like 20 minutes, right, straight. But like no, well, uh, you know, we don't want to waste your time so like she uh, made me made um, prepare the dough in advance and exactly the same recipe um, so this dough is uh, about like 36 percent hydration and then look at how she um, put the dough in a plastic bag right plastic bag 
and uh, shield the plastic bag, right, to keep the dough from losing the moisture. So that's how you sort of like um, rest the dough. That that was the first resting. That was the first resting, right? And in terms of um, noodles, that are like um, it's 36 percent hydration ratio. Um, this is sort of like kind of um, we call like medium hydration ratio noodles. You know that are great for um, ramen noodles. You know especially like um, shoyu ramen, like kind of like sort of Tokyo style shoyu ramen, or like even like um, Sapporo like um, miso ramen um, noodles. You know we can make them curly and like um, yeah, use them for like miso ramen. And um, so the first process, right? So what we are trying to do is like we, are, we want to like you know because this is a uh, dough is like kind of drier, right? Drier side. So again, like remember, you know, the less water you have, like the more pressure we need to apply, right, to um, build the muscle, right? So that's why um, we want to um, first, like, make um, you know, force it and force these crumbles to go into like sheet of dough, right? And then, but like that roller gap. Um, so there are two rollers, right? And then, like, you know, we can control the roller gap in between them. And then the roller gap uh, we set was like 1.5 millimeter, and um, so for this type of like medium hydration ratio noodles, you know, we set the roller gap to 1.5 millimeter, and because uh, the size of dough is like kind of relatively um, big, right? And then um, and we we don't we want to apply like so like kind of right amount of pressure for this hydration ratio. And um, if you're doing like lower hydration ratio, like you know, 28%, 25%, like sort of like Hakata style, like you know, tonkotsu noodles, um, we uh, set the roller gap to a uh, smaller um, gap, right? Narrower gap, so like one millimeter, because we want to apply bigger pressure, right? We want to apply bigger pressure, so like less hydration the bigger pressure we have to apply to build muscle. Um, that's why. And then uh, higher hydration noodles, like ramen noodles, for example, like 40%, like, you know, uh, tsukemen noodles, like dipping noodles. Um, we, so like we um, widen the roller gap, right, initial roller gap to like maybe like two millimeter, right? So like the size of crumbles, so dough like it's bigger. And then, you know, we want to um, apply like less pressure force um otherwise like you know we we may like end up like breaking the uh the muscle in the muscle in the dough um so we want to reduce the amount of, like pressure that you know we apply to the dough like um for i mean when we're doing like high hydration ratio noodles so, so you have to like kind of control you have to control like amount of pressure amount of force that you are applying to the dough when uh, you know developing um, the perfect um, noodle dough, yeah, you have to like think about you know kind of muscle like we're building, right? Uh, um, if you're like you know whether or not like we're building, I like, mean we're you know damaging the muscle or like um, it's it's like workout, right? It's like you know uh, exercising and then like you know um, having like proper rest and then yeah. So it's very, very similar, like it works in a very small way. Right, so that's the first process. Um, it's like maybe just rough sheet of dough, right? And, but like this is still, the dough is like still pretty, pretty weak, you know, after we do this uh, process. And um, so how, so how we can make it like stronger, right? How we can like develop like more muscle um, inside the dough, right? So that's um, the process like we uh, so like talked about um, in the lecture. Uh, so we separate it, right? We separate the dough, we separate this like sheet of dough into two parts, 
two sheets, right? Two separate sheets, and then um, combine them, right? Combine them through the roller gap. So this way we can again like work work the muscle of the dough. So we're gonna feed them, right? We're gonna feed into uh, roller gap, and then um, yeah, maybe go. And then like that was like 1.5 millimeter um, in show roller gap, right? And then but she's. Um, me setting it to two millimeter this time around um, because like each sheet is supposed to be like 1.5 millimeter in thickness and but like you know we're combining right we're combining like two separate sheets into one um, so you can say that like one you know there's like 1.5 1.5 millimeter um, those sheet is going in right so that's like equivalent of like three millimeter right three millimeter um, and then you know, we want to apply um, the right amount of pressure, right? I, I talk about like, otherwise, like we are, you may be like damaging the muscle, right? So um, we want to use this, um, um, like uh, the rule, right? We, uh, we came up with like um, through, um, you know, years of like experiments, experimentations and like, you know, trial and errors to develop like, you know, good uh, noodle dough is that like, you know, we apply this rule of like 30% rule, 30% pressure rule. So like every round of um, thinning, um, we reduce the thickness roller gap by 30%, 30%. So that was like, so that's supposed to be like three millimeter, right? Equivalent on those sheet. And um, if you roll it at like 1.5 millimeter, like that's too much, too much pressure, right? You know, we, we probably break the uh, muscle, so uh, we want want to reduce it by just by 30%. So 30%, so that, that's like um, 0 0.9 millimeter. So we just uh, subtract 0 0.9 millimeter from the 3 millimeter, right? So that's be that's 2.1 millimeter, but like you know, just make it simple and then rounding rounding it down to like 2.0 millimeter. So that's why um, let me set the wall gap to two millimeter. And it's see like it's amazing like how the those surface is like now like you know a lot smoother than before, right? So it's like building the muscle, right? It's building muscle like it's getting firmer. Stay more firm, right? Um, and then, you know, and then I think I think we think like this dough can take another round of like muscle building. So we do another round of like this combining process again. And that was like two millimeter um, roller gap that this dough went through, right? So like each sheet is supposed to be like two millimeter in thickness. And so we are putting them, putting two sheets together, right? So like that's two millimeter thickness though, plus two millimeter thickness though. So that's supposed to be like four, right? Four millimeter equivalent though is going in. And again, you know, we are putting this 30% rule. And so that's uh, 1.2 millimeter subtraction from the four millimeter. And that makes it like 2.8 millimeter, um, but like, you know, again, like for the same simplicity, right? We round it up to three. So that's why I mean, we like set the wall gap to three millimeter. And and from this point on, right, we want the dough, this uh, dough to, um, you know, want the dough to like keep from like sticking. Um, so the hydration ratio is like a really, really um, high or like medium, so there's a risk that these stoves like stick together. So we want to start dusting from this point on. And then this machine has like this automatic duster that um, let you dust like automatically, and then um, you know at the the volume 
at the like dusting volume that you want. Then of course, like higher the hydration, like more wet the dough, you know, the more um, you want to dust, right? And so, so that was the second combining process, right? And as we talked about in the lecture, um, this goes into the second resting process. So you need to just sort of um, wrap uh, wrap the dough brown with uh, this like plastic bag, right? And to make sure that like you know the dough don't like lose any moisture, um, you know, don't be wouldn't dry out, right? So and then um, so we have this um, rack. That you uh, like you hold the dough sheet like this, right? And, and we can probably just, um, let it sit for like uh, one hour, at room temperature. And um, and I'd love to wait for another hour for that to be ready, right? But like you know, um, unfortunately we don't have that much time today. So uh, she prepared the uh, dough. That's done for um, second resting process. So again, like remember like that was like three millimeter roll gap, right? It's gone through like after the, I mean, when we're doing like a second combining process. So, you know, we're going three, up from three to um, two, because like, because a 30% reaction rule. So three uh, to two, two millimeter roll gap. So this process is sort of like kind of beyond the scope of this class, but like um, basically like after, well, you know, we're done with the dough development, like so the, well, it's a, uh, well, dough, dough now has like a lot of muscles, right? A lot of muscles, like, so, you know, well, all we have to care about from this point on is that like, you know, we should not, um, damage this muscle that we developed so far so that's why we want to apply this 30 percent reduction rule it's so like gradually thin it gradually thin it to the final thickness so that was two millimeter right and so the next like 30 using a 30 percent reduction rule um but like uh First, like let's measure the actual thickness, and then that's like 2.5 millimeter, and uh, see the difference, right? See the difference between like actual thickness and the roller gap that we set, like two millimeter, and but like actual thickness like 2.5 or six. Um, so there's a difference of like 0 0.5, 0 0.6 millimeter, and um, so the dough is like always like bounces back, right? Uh, so after it's gone through the roller gap. Um, it always bounces back. So, um, you know, the, this dough, particular, this particular dough, like bounces back by 0.5. And then, yeah, she's going to cut it. She's going to cut it right first uh, with this uh, cutter, like number 16. It's like about, about like two millimeter in width. And then it has this uh, parts in the back of the cutter, right? Um, to make them make the noodles come out uh, curly, like wavy noodles. Right, so all set and 
from there everything is all set and um, another feature that kind of want to talk about is that like you know you can uh, set it to the cutter mode now right and then like so this machine is like ready to cut the noodles right and then um, so that those sheet is like kind of like being fed into the cutter and then see like it's coming out and um, so this is a uh, so now you can see that like it's all like curly and stuff right and then a little curly right and then um, you can well these are very very curly right and like it's as curly as like maybe like um, mission cup noodle or something but like it's uh you can actually control the curliness the noodles you can make them lighter you make them like even curlier um it's up to you um and then you know you can of course like uh, change the shoving size automatically and uh, by like change the length of the noodles that's just a touch of the uh, the volume That's um, I think these noodles are very good for um, with like kind of show you type ramen noodles and then like of course you know like kind of miso ramen noodles as well. So that's uh, how so that's how you make um, yeah these type of noodles uh, ramen noodles like these curly ramen noodles and then um, I wish you guys can try them because the uh, the texture is perfect. Um, it's exactly the kind of texture like we, you know, we visualized when we, you know, thought about making them. Again, like you know, you have to start with an end in mind um, to, you know, create, make, let develop like the kind of kind of, kind of noodles that you want to make. And you have to you need to visualize. You need to like think about like you know what kind of little texture you want your customers to experience, right? You know that everything starts from there, and then um, you should be able to like end up like you know making um, great noodles. All right, so um, I I think like just just was uh, like you know foundation of like noodles and then um, making like perfect noodle doughs like is the starting point and. Uh, was uh, actually a lot to cover, right? It's a lot to cover, and I hope uh, I was clear on the like important points. But like, if you have like any questions, like you know, if you have like any anything that you wanna um, explore more about, um, please feel free to contact us, and then um, you know I'll be like more than happy to like share more information with you guys. So that's it. That's what I had like for this class. And then so thank you so much for tuning in. And then like uh, I hope to be able to see you guys in the next class. So thank you so much. Bye bye.